Before we start off this video, uh, pretty major spoilers for the following Zelda games. <laughs> Now don't get me wrong, I love Breath of the Wild. It's an amazing game with an amazing open world, and it drew me in from the moment I saw it. But here's the thing though, you can't end a fantastic game the way it did. Welcome to The Legend of Zelda, Ganon Sucks Edition. <coughs> I can already hear people saying that the combat in Breath of the Wild is engaging, and that the use of multiple weapons keeps you on your toes. In that regard, dearest viewer, you are correct. The way that Breath handles itself with you constantly having to get used to different weapons is brilliant, but not in this situation. See, in all Zelda games, the Master Sword has sealed away Ganon's reincarnates time and time again. This means that they have to make the Master Sword the weapon that you fight Calamity, Calamity Ganon with, right? Well, yes and no. It's very true that you can go grab the Master Sword and it powers up and you got the woo when you go fight him, whatever but you can also fight him with just normal weapons, but that isn't as cool, come on. This means that they have to throw away the dwindling health on your weapons so that, you know, you can fight Ganon with the Master Sword. And that had a weird disconnect with me. Plus, if you play the way the game was supposed to be played, then half of his health is already taken away. And another thing is that they didn't even use the Sheikah Slate. <coughs> Circling back to what I said earlier, Breath of the Wild is a very fun game. Its mechanics fuse well with the world, and how you interact with it. But if you're gonna base the entire game off of what you can do with the Sheikah Slate, then why can't I manipulate the fight at all? I also know that the Sheikah Slate is kind of slow, but couldn't you at least use the Magnesis or Cryonis at all? I mean, it'd be kind of cool. It'd be kind of cool. I know it seems like an unworthwhile complaint, but like, you're not able to use your most valuable weapon at your disposal. Even though I know it's an exploit, and the AI is just kind of drawn to it because it's technically a weapon. You can still use the fishing rod in Twilight Princess. I mean, <laughs> it's really stupid, but you can. Not to mention turning into a wolf, the game's main mechanic, is used up until the last fight. Which brings me to my biggest complaint. I don't know if very many people share this gripe, but it, it's something personal, so I'm, I'm going to talk about it. The thing that makes Ganondorf such a huge threat to me, specifically, is because he isn't just a big hulking behemoth at the end of a game. He's a cunning warlord. Like, that that's spooky. That's spooky. And I think that was my greatest disappointment for Breath of the Wild. I mean, I was half expecting his, like, a uh, molten cheese guardian-infused body to melt away, and then we'd have a battle similar to Skyward Sword. Please, God, strike me down. I've just insinuated that Skyward Sword is better than Breath of the Wild in some way. <laughs> to be honest though, Skyward Sword did have a pretty good final boss battle. Motion controls are not. It also lays groundwork for what every Ganondorf reincarnate bases his ideals off of. I suppose that's why it's so hard to write prequels. I mean, everything has to lead into another thing. Everything has to start off another thing. And it's hard. It's, dif it's difficult. Difficult! Unfortunately, Calamity Ganon wasn't written like a normal Ganondorf, in the sense that all of the predecessors are trying to take over Hyrule for the Gerudos. Calamity Ganon, on the other hand, is this just big mess of unrelenting power. Also, what happens when you put a hot dog in the microwave? There's no motivation, and nobody's even sure where he even really came from. Uh, also, I have this problem where in all of these games, we have an amazing feat of ability when happening when we finally prevail. Twilight Princess, Ganondorf flies back, we do a flip and stab him all the way through, and that's pretty okay with me. Wind Waker, Zelda shoots a light arrow, we spin around him, do a flip, and bonk him right in the cranium. Ocarina of Time, we play tennis, and we boop him right in the big dumb floppy nose. Right in the big dumb floppy nose. Boop. Skyward Sword, we do a majestic swan dive, lightning strikes us, and oh, my tummy! In breath, he shoots a laser, you fly up, you shoot him in the giant eye on his back. I know these all seem triumphant, but one of these things is not like the other. One of these things just doesn't belong. What I'm trying to say is one looks incredibly cool, and the rest make us feel cool. 
this is more or less my opinion, but like, why make the Master Sword invincible and then have us down Calamity Ganon with an arrow of all things? Now I bet you're wondering. Well, I saw, I saw Majora's Mask in the spoilers, but why hasn't he used any footage yet? It's mostly because Ganon doesn't even show up in it, but it also exhibits something that I like to call a balance in power. This of course means in this given case, having a non-human battle is fine, as long as you give me an edge in the battle as well. The Fierce Deity Mask is quite possibly my favorite mask throughout the game, and was also featured in the Breath of the Wild video I did a while back. Now I'm not saying that I need to be a gross giant lava monster, but imagine if that motorcycle wasn't your guardian. By the end of the game, I had visited multiple shrines, beaten all the divine beasts, and downed I don't know how many guardians. So why, in the black, pink, and mechanical fuck, would I want to see more guardian shit? I can understand that the game focuses mostly on those aspects, being that malice can be found everywhere, and there are multiple guardians littered around the world, but why? But why? I can also understand theming, and I can see that he was made to look unnerving, but he also looks like he was thrown together in an afternoon. Hey Phil, did you put together Ganon yet? <laughs> oh shit. At the time of writing this script, I had only ever seen the original ending, but they also did sell us another ending, so I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about that as well. So after all the said antics, uh, Zelda eventually just does her like little Hadouken <laughs> blast, and, <laughs> and then he's gone. It's just gone, and she kind of had she has like this dead face when she does it. And I find it incredibly funny. And that's great and all, but it's so anticlimactic. Like, like this? Like this? This is very visually stunning. But it also makes me feel like garbage because he was so easily defeated. Then the original ending all ends with Zelda asking if you remember her. This is not a bad way to end this game. That is not a terrible way to end this game, you know? You're collecting memories of all your friends in the past and even memories of her. But did it have to end so abruptly after that? I guess my problem with this is that it doesn't resolve anything, you know? In Twilight Princess, you have this heartbreaking scene where Midna shatters the mirror of Twilight. In Wind Waker, Link and Tetris are picked up by a band of all the characters you've shared stories with throughout your journey. In Majora's Mask, the moon is obliterated and you don't have to relive the three days over and over again because you broke the pattern. And in Skyward Sword, it explains how and why this keeps happening throughout every game. Breath really doesn't resolve anything, simply because it can't. The game is too open-ended, and that kind of leaves the ending up to interpretation, I guess. It's not as story-driven as the past titles. My second problem with this is that Link looks so unenthused to see Zelda. Like, we spent the entire game trying to remember her, gather memories of her, and he just <laughs> he just has this dead expression on his face. What? Oh, hey Zelda. I could care less. <laughs> Across all of the 3D Zelda games, Link is so expressive that it hurts. I know that some of them are just, you know, face expression templates, but Jesus Christ! It makes it seem like Link is an actual person and not just an extension character that we plug ourselves into. This video is becoming less about Ganon and more about the entire ending, but I feel like it all goes hand in hand. In the DLC ending, you know, you've won. You've won. But there's still stuff to do. Now I feel like I should be inclined to go do those things with Zelda, but there's nothing you can do. It's kind of like having an open world game where you end it, and then have a little bit more where it's like, oh, we could, we could keep this going but then don't keep it going. And also, I know I'm not the first YouTuber to make this joke, but what was up with all those yoga pants shots of Zelda? It's like, it's kind of weird. The ending of such a fantastic game shouldn't be as cliche and anticlimactic as it was, and I'm kind of disappointed, but I'm content. Now, just because I didn't exactly like how the game ended, doesn't mean that I didn't enjoy the game. 
In fact, the game itself is pretty calming and so atmospherically pristine that I'm sad to see it end with something so visually stunning and not much to back it up. I want that, I want that triumphant feeling, you know? Like, I want to feel like I finally did something with my life and not sat in a basement and made a video about how shitty the ending is. Now, I'm no critic, but I give Breath of the Wild a 5 out of 5. But I'm giving the fucking ending a 2 out of 5, Jesus Christ! Thank you so much for watching this video. Um, <laughs> this is unscripted, so I don't know what to say, but, uh, you know, if you, if you enjoy, if you enjoyed this at all, I'm gonna do a little bit more of these, I hope. I'll try and find something to talk about. Oh look, I got, I got a little eye, I got a little eyes. Eh, that's really funny. All these hoes all up in my Picto chat. Nintendo Picto chat. Oh, I didn't hit the button. <laughs>